Now, as you can see, I've got a basic sketch up here on the canvas, a couple of big trees, some rocks, and what will be waterfalls in the background. And I've got a little clear gel, which I'm gonna just smush here in the background. I mean, this is not a sky, but you know, there, at least they have a little clear gel. <laughs> that was not a very good even coat, but I don't even care. It's just there and we can work with it. it helps the, the paint just to flow around a little bit. So I'm gonna take some black now, just the tiniest touch of green, white of course, and I'm gonna underpaint this background now because again, this is not sky. This is just rocks and stuff. Very bright, very light in color, just like that. You could do just a tiny speck of blue, but I don't really don't want much blue here in this background. Just a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Too much blue, I think, will just be distracting for the painting. Hey, before we go too far, let's take a look at the paintings that you guys did in my last one. Hopefully you're doing your own version and sharing them with me. You know, the information is right there on the screen. If you're interested, and if I see them in time, I'll put them in the next video. Everybody gets to see them. That'll be fun. All right, a little darker as we work our way around. I'm just going to go a little bit darker. And at some point, we're going to transition out of foggy background things and transition into proper rocks. That transition will take place <laughs> somewhere right in there. Pretty obvious by the sketch, but you know. That's why you sketch. Now I'm gonna to begin to underpaint a lot of these rocks here, just starting with gray ones, and now I've got kind of a greenish gray. You know, it's just little by little working these colors in. We'll try not to jump too quickly from one shade of gray into the next, and the green needs to come in slowly. We don't want it to just wham, and it's all of a sudden green. That would be very distracting. See what I mean? So we want these colors today. I think color is so important. And it needs to be very, oh, you know, subtle transitions. I'm gonna just drag that along, creating just a feeling of a tree here. Not much. That's about all I want. Just a background tree. You know, you can have some of these bits over here as well. Just by scrubbing. Less is more here. I think less is more really in this whole background area. You can see I almost made a waterfall just by putting a rock there and there. It's very hard to tell, but if you kind of squint your eyes, you can see it. Um, that's good, that's good. Okay, waterfall here. There's my, there's my main one here. Uh, that's gonna be a rock, so there's one here. I think there's one, I don't know. Maybe there's one right here. I kinda can't tell anymore. So I'll just leave, I'll leave some, I'll tell you what, I'll leave some places that are blank and the blank places will be water. How's that? So I've got, uh, there's this nice waterfall here. A little lighter. Yeah, there we go. That'll work. So just continue to paint, underpaint all of this. And then over here will actually be quite a bit darker almost not quite black, but we're getting there, getting pretty close. I'm just moving forward here, painting in some more rocks. We haven't really talked much about light source uh, today. It is coming across kind of like this, you know, from left to right. So it'll be on that side of the rock, that side of the trees. My waterfall, they'll just be kind of light. You'll not really notice a whole lot of light source in this area too much. That's kind of on the back side anyways, but right, let's get this rock in, not too, not too dark. I think that's a little too dark, but I can always lighten it later. In fact, I'm going to just, just change the shape ever so slightly there, just to make it a better shape. That's why you sketch, you know, you don't follow your sketch. If you don't like your sketch, you can say, well, that, that, you know, that's not quite right. I'm going to adjust it, do it now. It's easy, you know, versus <laughs> just painting the rock in all dark and then deciding that you'd rather change the shape. Okay, that makes enough sense. It's simple. It's, it's not that it's, you know, all the stuff that I always talk about, it's like no brainer. It's just when you get a brush in your hand, you totally forget everything. <laughs> it just goes crazy. That's why planning makes a big difference. There. And I'm not one to plan. I mean, that kind of goes against my personality anyway. So if I'm telling you to plan, oh wow, you better take it seriously. <laughs> All right, that's probably enough rock action, at least just for this moment. But more than likely, you have to get in here and add some more little things and whatnot. You know, there's some dark around. 
there's some more dark. I, you know, a lot of this just needs to be filled in. I've got these beautiful trees. I'm gonna brush in just some dark here. There, there's mostly umber. We're talking about 95% umber here in this. I think that's pretty. I think that totally works. There you go. These are like super tropical jungle trees and <laughs> my poor Filbert brush. Uh, <laughs> it's probably driving somebody nuts. It's okay. I got my money's worth out of that one. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna, anyway, what I was gonna say was like, we're gonna do like, um, what are those called? They, um, aerial roots. We're gonna do aerial roots on these that kind of wrap around the trunk. That'll be so pretty. And you know, they might come down and we'll do that more kind of as we get the rest of the painting in because you want your roots all like around stuff. So if you're planning to do like background uh, ferns or something in this area, you'll want to do those roots later. I'm just getting the big trees in just to get a feel for the painting. Technically, the correct way to do this would be to work from the back and come forward. You know, you can do your furthest thing and then you come forward, but you don't need to follow that too strictly because it's so easy to go back and repair your edges and whatnot. All right, just wrapping up. Removing some of that paint. Um, you know what? Honestly, we probably should remove a little bit over here. I'm not as worried about that. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to take some white, just some off white. I actually don't necessarily need it to be too bright because again, you have to imagine our light's kind of coming through this direction, kind of from the front, but also from the left there. So this is not necessarily totally in highlight. I'm just gonna set my brush down because I've already wiped this off. I should be okay to just pull straight down. And this may be most of what we do. I might just blend it a little and, and call it good right here, honestly. Okay, that'll work, <laughs> that'll work. Now, just going up here, we can have these little, little ones. And I'm okay with it mixing a little, see that? Just, and it will mix, even though I wiped it off. I didn't wipe it that much off, I just gave it a quick, Go over with a shop towel. Okay, and then just a little bit up in here. Look at that, in no time at all, you've got a little waterfall. Now, over here, I'll do some more over here, but I wanna show you these. I do want just a little faint hint of something here in the back. I mean, this is a very, a very tropical, very wet. There's a lot of, a lot of action. I think that one, you see that one almost feels like a waterfall back there, but maybe I'll kind of enhance that by maybe pulling one over there as well. That could work, see that? Just something like that. It's not critical. If you just throw a couple in here, I think you'll be fine. I'll try not to overdo it. There we go. Just need a little dark color in those blank areas. I probably should have done that earlier, but that's okay. It'll work just fine. So now I, I'm not painting water so much. Okay. I mean, I mean, I'm painting water. I'm not, I'm not too concerned about my water. You know what I mean? I'm just, because I, I've still got rocks to kind of detail and bring out. I'm just mapping this out. This is just as much of a sketch as it is trying to get my water actually painted. Cause I'm not actually sure. And I haven't determined yet with my, with my sketch from earlier what's going on, you know what I mean? I don't necessarily, it's like I don't like that. So I'll make anything I don't like, I'm gonna make it mist. I'm just sketching. <laughs> I'm sketching and painting at the same time. And there's a lot of paint on here, so I'm gonna probably wipe some of this off before I go to detailing anything. But just general, like I said, just general, trying to figure stuff out. Okay, now I was planning to, right about here, have a drop off, so I'm gonna just begin to indicate that. Okay, that's pretty, and I think I'll do a drop off on the other side, right here, maybe here. All right, I believe this is the most important step here of probably the whole painting, which is wiping, taking a shop towel and wiping off these rocks. I glopped a lot of paint up on here because it's faster to do it that way. And it's not that big of a deal for me to come back in here and remove some of that extra paint. So you can do that a little bit here in the water also if you want just to uh, sort of get rid of some of that wet paint if it's gonna be in the way. This will really make it easier for me to detail. And I'll put my shadows and highlights over this. But you see the color remains, you know, the color is there, but, but the, uh, the slippery wet paint on top is what's gonna be the problem. So get that off before we go to the next step. And also kind of in, in the same 
you know, as you're wiping, you may want to jump back and forth. I'm going to do this here. I'm going to take a lot of this just blue that I set down before I accidentally get carried away and wipe it all away. I'm going to take that and float it up into the mist, and create mist really out of it, and pull, see, just a little mist over some of these rocks. Because it's that mist that I, th I think that contrast of the mist against the sharp edges that's really make this nice. Yeah, see? Two seconds with a blender brush. If you don't have one of these, definitely go to the website and pick one up. This is, this is a great little blender. Kind of cup chisel on the edge like that. See that? It's not just flat. It's a great little size. But that will work. So now I can bring in some darks, some dark blacks. You can see I put a little moss on some of these rocks, which is good. You know, you can, you can easily kind of work back and forth. I think up here will be actually more interesting, but I'm just going to begin putting in my shadows anywhere where I think that I need them. Sometimes it's hard to tell, you know, and especially we've been just really quick and, and loose and sloppy. But now it's time to get everything here under control. So I'm going to begin to put in this dark, really figure out kind of where things need to go. Okay, this is going to be, actually I'm going to, I'm going to refine some of this. I just laid down some color, but I'm going to have more trees and stuff back up in here in just a little while. But I like having this darker color, you know, even right here, just splash in a little dark. And remember, I've wiped all these rocks off. There's very little paint here, so I'm able to do this. If you didn't do the wiping it off step, <laughs> this is going to be next to impossible. But because I wiped it off, I pretty well can't mess it up. Now I'm going to put on just a little bit of uh, moss to these rocks. I don't want it maybe too bright, just kind of a little bit subtle today. There we go. I'm just going to tap it on. You see, I, I've just spent a few minutes up here putting in some, just some darker color, you know, just smushing it in here and there. See that? It's really not, really not that big of a deal. Just getting us some color there to work with. And again, once, you know, it takes a couple layers. You got to put it on, wipe it off, put it on, wipe it off. But now I think I'm happy. I did not wipe this black that I just put in off because, see, I do want it to mix. See, I'm allowing it to kind of get muddy. I'm happy with it. Doing that, that helps because I do want it to be fairly soft. This isn't so much, the highlight's going to be more in this area and not so much up here. So that helps me to balance out this painting just a little better. And it actually wouldn't even hurt to have a little touch a blue, I don't know if you can really tell that or not that there's blue in it, but there's just a little blue in that green. It's not totally just sap green and yellow. And again, that helps with the shadows. Yeah, that to me works, you know. I'm not, uh, I'm not needing anything too advanced here. That's pretty good. You can always brighten it up later on. If you say, well, I really wish that came out a little brighter. Go ahead and brighten it up. But I just don't think it needs to be super bright today for what we're trying to accomplish. All right, carefully, carefully here, wrapping up, wiping away my water areas so that they're fairly dry, actually very dry. I've got most of the paint off of them so that I can actually highlight, which is good. And you'll notice this is a way, way simpler. And you remember we kind of did the water earlier, but it was mostly just to sketch it in. So now I'm gonna do it a little nicer. And I've wiped away all the paint. So the only thing that remains here is just a stain on the canvas. And I'm just going to begin working in these little highlights. I'm not going to go crazy. Just little by little, I'm going to build this up. My color is not overly bright. You see that right there? It's not really, I mean, I have a little blue in it, but very little blue. Very, very little. I think just doing too many too many times we'll go in and just do one waterfall and leave it. You know, I think these little waterfalls really add quite a lot to the painting. And again, this is not possible. I just want to tell you this is not possible if you don't wipe away the canvas and get that slippery wet paint out of there. You'll have all kinds of issues. But if you take the time to wipe the canvas off, you'll be in, you'll be in good shape. All right, just got done adding. That's actually a root. I know that's crazy. You may have to, if you're not very familiar with these kind of trees, you may have to look up uh, like trees with, I believe if you just search trees with aerial roots, you'll come up with something that looks a lot like this. You'll see what I'm, what I'm kind of basing this off of. All right, so, and, and more will become noticeable as we go here, but. 
I'm going to go ahead and highlight using some, there's our umber and white. <laughs> Look at my palette, very gray green today. That's cool. Okay, here we go. Let's try it and see, see if we even like it on the canvas. Lots of paint. See that? I got more, more paint than brush as I go and highlight this. I'm glopping it on thick and heavy. I don't have a lot of paint on my trees, but you, you will pick up a little, little bit. Okay, and then we'll just blend, you know, kind of one section into the uh, in, in, into another, and it'll work. Not too bright, not too bright though. And then as I go, see, I'm just going to establish the big parts of the tree first. That will definitely, definitely work. Yeah, look how pretty that is. Let's get it some highlight. Just we're just going to do this to all the trees, but let's get some highlight on this one. This is critical that you glop it on thick like this or else it'll kind of be muddy and it won't really show up very well. It got to be fairly thick and heavy. This is my highlight, you know, and I can finish it with a liner brush. Now I'm going to finish up this water here with the liner brush. You can see my color, kind of just a soft gray, blue gray color. Not too much blue, obviously, because uh, there's not a lot of blue in our background. But I'm using the liner brush because we've got so many layers of paint at this point, we're going to be better off just coming in and hitting it with a liner brush because that way it won't mix. I darkened that up some. Now I'm going to lighten it up, just playing back and forth. And what I'll do is, you know, spend a couple of minutes on the water here with the liner brush. And we'll do some other things, maybe like um, big leaves and just details in the foreground also. When you do waterfalls that are close here, in the foreground, it, it tends to be best because you're looking down on them and they're kind of low in the landscape. It tends to be best to do a lot of shadow toward the bottom, and just keep the highlight at the top. And then just as it barely starts to curl over, that highlight begins to fade away. I'm gonna place just a little highlight, a little detail down here. Just quickly dropped in some leaves, but this is where it gets good as you take your liner brush and I don't even know, it's not that thin, it's just kind of moderately thin. And I'm just gonna, bring in a couple of highlights, details and stuff up in here on these leaves. Some of the leaves I did quickly, some I took a little more time on. And you know, it's just a matter of, you know, you do it however you need to do it. You know, you don't, you don't necessarily need to make them all detailed. Here's a little, so you can go in with some black and kind of carve back out a leaf or two if you want things going in other directions. Like I said, don't have enough in other directions. Let me do that. Sometimes it's easy to get in a rut and do all of the, do it all one way. So that's basically just straightforward little leaf there, just carving it out with a liner brush. I think the liner brush just is the easiest for detailing things like this. Our light's kind of from above and, and front like that. So it's just not, nothing too crazy. You know, That'll work. Some branches and stuff from the bush or whatever this is. That would be good, probably. Don't want that, don't want them too bright. <laughs> don't want them too bright. That's probably good. It looks a little bit busy that way. Busy is good in the foreground. Well, that about wraps up this painting for today. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing it. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button, that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.